The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the AVPN webinar on mobilizing human capital for greater social impact. My name is Kavita, and I'm the manager, knowledge, and member engagement at the Asian Venture Philanthropy Network, India. AVPN is a unique funders network committed to building a high impact philanthropy and social investment community across Asia. Currently, we have over 500 members across 29 countries, and we are very pleased to have two of our members based in India speaking today. Representing Arthan, we have Anchal Kakkar, VP Strategy and Partnerships. She'll enlighten us on how Arthan is helping in mobilizing human capital in the impact space. Following that, we have Sergio Lilani, who is the country director in India at Amani Institute. She'll take us through a case study to show how Amani Institute mobilizes human capital in the impact space. Before we proceed, a few housekeeping instructions. We will not take any questions during the presentation, but we'll open up the floor for Q&A afterwards. Please feel free to use the console to type in your questions during the presentations, and I will raise the questions to our speakers in the Q&A session. If you have further questions that are not answered by the end of the webinar, you can email us at india at avpn.asia. Without further ado, I will now hand over the presentation to Anchal. Uh, thank you, Kavita. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone uh, from India. Um, th uh, this is Anchal Kakkar. Uh, as Kavita mentioned, I am lead strategy and partnerships at Arthan. Uh, just a very quick overview um, about my experience. Uh, prior to Arthan, I worked in consulting in the impact sector itself. And um, the other two founders at Arthan, uh, Satyam and Rahul, uh, all three of us uh, have varying uh, experience um, and uh, a variety of experience in the social sector. However, all of us uh, in our individual jobs uh, prior to Arthan realized that there was the need for an organization in the impact space that specifically tried to address challenges that organizations face in human capital. Uh, and at the same time, we felt that there is uh, no dearth of talent um, that uh, wants to move to the impact sector. However, th there is a lack of direction and uh, an understanding of what that what are the kind of jobs that they can look at. Uh, so uh, also some of you may have um, uh, expected my colleague Rahul to be at the session. Uh, unfortunately, he got held up at something urgent. So in case there are any questions directed at him specifically, happy to take that at the end of the session and perhaps offline later. Um, just to begin, um, uh, how we define Arthan is that we provide human capital advisory support for the social impact sector. Um, I will now move to the next slide. Um, so, um, uh, Arthan is a social enterprise uh, uh, dedicated to transforming human capital in the social impact sector in India. Two of the key things about our organization uh, that are very specific are that A, we only work with organizations that uh, are mission driven or in the social impact sector. Uh, it, irrespective of the kind of structure that they have. Uh, however, that they should be directly or indirectly impacting uh, organization uh, beneficiaries at the bottom of the pyramid. And secondly, we specifically provide support, which is related to uh, uh, which is related to human capital. Uh, and uh, when I say human capital, the kind of support we provide can vary from helping organizations hire to helping them with their HR policies and processes or organizational development. Uh, and I will get to each of these things in more detail uh, in the late, in sl slides later on. Um, but our, the overall purpose is to help strengthen the human capital functions in organizations that we work with. Uh, moving on. Um, just to give you a macro level overview of why we felt that this was a challenge that was faced by organizations uh, and faces our experiences as well. Um, 
a number of challenges that employers or organizations in the social sector face are that a that there is a lack of reliable database of quality job seekers that they can refer to um, when they are when they are they want to hire uh, candidates. At the same time, uh, sometimes organizations are unaware of the variety of avenues that are available if you want to hire talent with uh, a particular domain or uh, as, I, as I mentioned in the third point with respect to the right uh, place or location. Um, attrition, of course, is is not um, is not specific only to the social sector. However, we wanted to delve deeper into understanding how organizations that are very well established um, in the social sector and have a, you know great culture, why do they still face attrition? So, how do we help these organizations uh, manage that? Um, Limited resources, especially with respect to finances, is something which is fairly common across almost all social organizations that we end up working with. And that, of course, is a, that directly impacts the kind of resources uh, with respect to time that organizations also have. So how do organizations manage their human capital um, with these constraints in mind? And, uh, and also certain organizations um, may have few resources that are looking at HR. So how do they look at uh, all sorts of processes and strategies with respect to talent. Having seen these challenges is what we uh, set up Arthan uh, with um, to address about two years ago. Um, the other uh, part of it uh, in the next slide uh, are the opportunities that are available. And the, again, as I mentioned, this is more macro. But um, given that India will soon have the largest youth population in the world that's ready to join the workforce, coupled with the fact that uh, the internet uh, usage is, of course, uh, only increasing in in also uh, not only in the urban but in the peri-urban and rural areas, um, that obviously presents itself with an opportunity of uh, of catalyzing that talent into the impact sector. And the impact se sector itself, of course, there are not too many statistics out there, but if we look at just the NGO sector, that's about 3.3 million in itself. And this is not counting all the for-profit social businesses that are emerging. Hence, just looking at the, at the market as a whole, it could be uh, estimated to be around 35 to 40 billion USD. So just also from the perspective of running a business that is sustainable um, and, and addressing a social cause, uh, this is something that we uh, feel is something that should be worked on. Uh, moving on to my next slide. Uh, this slide essentially captures, um, in a nutshell, the kind of services that Arthan provides. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of our work does vary on a case-by-case -case basis. However, if I had to summarize the four uh, areas that we look at, they are given over here. Uh, first is strategic hiring support. Uh, I will delve deeper into each of these um, in, the, in the next few slides. However, uh, just talking about the strategic hiring support, that's pretty much one of the services that we began with and that's something which uh, most of the organizations we work with are, um, are, are required on a regular basis. Uh, the support we end up providing is twofold. One is our executive search vertical where we where we understand the requirement and then set out to find that relevant candidate uh, for the organization. And the second is our exclusive jobs portal, uh, arthancareers.com, which, uh, which is specifically dedicated to the impact sector. And job seekers as well as employers can log in there and hire talent or find jobs on, on their own as well. Uh, Secondly, we look at organizational development. This encompasses everything around the consulting support that we provide linked to talent. So this could include everything from helping organizations with HR policies, uh, their performance management systems, uh, even something as basic as writing the JD or just reviewing the JD. So any support that an organization needs linked to talent. The third is capacity building workshops that we uh, provide uh, specifically linked to talent or human capital. And these are always curated depending on the, uh, the needs of the audience. Uh, and uh, typically these would be, um, uh, to give an example, uh, the incubators of a particular, a particular incubator who are, uh, say, all looking at, uh, at the agribusiness. So we would do a survey of um, all the organizations, understand their pain points, uh, do relevant case studies in the agri business space so that these organizations can benefit from uh, from the workshop that we uh, conduct and accordingly try and help understand understand the challenges with respect to human capital that these organizations face. 
And lastly, uh, we realize that working one on one with specific organizations uh, or individuals is obviously not enough, and there is a need to create the necessary dialogue around uh, around human capital in the sector. So we do uh, conduct um, workshops, uh, knowledge sessions, conventions uh, periodically, some independently and some with like-minded partners. So we have an annual event uh, every, every December, which is a human capital summit that we do, uh, mainly directed at organizations in the impact sector. Uh, and uh, we also have our uh, demystifying social impact uh, sectors, um, uh, uh, sessions that we do uh, in collaboration with Amani uh, Institute and IIC. So it's um, this is a key component of the work that we do because it's really important to um, or to understand the pain points that organizations face in talent in the social sector at the same time bringing together uh, people or aspirants uh, who want to move to the impact sector but are a little clueless on where to begin and how to navigate that. Uh, so the first point that I mentioned, the strategic hiring, strategic hiring support that we provide, uh, I will begin with the details around that. Uh, so apart from the the job portal that I already spoke about, the offline support we end up providing is is two kinds. One is we do end to end hiring, typically for mid to senior level roles, where we write from understanding the requirement that an organization has to working on the JD to actually doing the shortlisting and interviews, uh, to managing salary negotiations, um, to even uh, finalizing helping the organization finalize the offer letter. We end up supporting the organization provide providing end to end support in hiring, um, and and of course as uh, organizations would do if someone joins through us and leaves within a certain period of time. We also then provide uh, a replacement candidate free of cost. Uh, and typically this helps us. Uh, this uh, process obviously happens working closely with leadership teams uh, and this uh, uh, leads to uh, also helps us understand the kind of challenges that the organization is facing and uh, the kind of support we can provide beyond hiring, which I'll talk about later. Uh, the second kind of HR support we provide is uh, HR operations or hiring operations. Uh, there are lots of organizations that receive uh, n number of applications and don't have a challenge receiving the the necessary number of ap applications for a particular role, but don't have the bandwidth or the necessary processes in place to screen these and actually lead to the clo closure of the role. So we we also manage end to end operations on around hiring, uh, be it from helping with screening or interviews uh, or streamlining the processes and so on. The second uh, kind of uh, the division that we have in our organization is around organizational support or organizational development. And this, uh, of course, is fairly closely linked to uh, to hiring, but um, it, the support that we end up providing is everything around human capital. Uh, I'm just waiting for that slide to open. Yes, uh, I won't spend too much time on this slide um, as it's it talks about how consulting really is. Uh, but uh, just to summarize, uh, we do look deeply into analyzing what are the pain points an organization is facing before even getting to the the service that they need our help with, and then devising a strategy around that uh, that is best suited to that organization uh, with respect to human capital. Uh, so going on to the next slide, uh, I can show you examples uh, of the kind of of services we provide under organizational development. Having said this, this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, there are organizations uh, where we provide other HR support, uh, which may not be listed here, depending on their requirements. Uh, but if I had to quickly walk uh, you through this, uh, the kind of OD services we provide include uh, writing or reviewing HR policies, uh, helping streamline or even set up HR processes, uh, helping the organizational structure uh, being built, uh, which could be linked to the budget of the organization or the programs that they have in place, and helping the organization understand what are the roles you hire for first before, uh, the, what is the priority of roles in hiring, which are the roles that definitely uh, are not there in the organization structure and that, that should be introduced. Also helping with recruitment strategies and interviewing techniques. Uh, 
uh, followed by learning and development programs. Uh, this could include a soft skill training or any other identifying the skill gap uh, that an organization may have with respect to the employees and then finding out how do you close that skill gap and doing that skill gap analysis first. Um, the rest of the points, uh, of course, are fairly self-explanatory, but I'll just quickly list them down, helping with employee agreements, uh, talent management, uh, for example, setting up the entire performance management system and then helping the organization monitor that, uh, followed by advisory services around talent and HR audits. Uh, this is a snapshot of the kind of organizations we end up supporting. Of course, this is also not uh, not exhaustive, but just to give a sense, uh, our work ranges from organizations in education to public policy to capacity building uh, across functions, which may include programs or operations, finance, HR, uh, academics, um, and the organizations we work with range from NGOs uh, to think tanks to um, foundations to impact funds and so on. As long as the organization is impactful. Uh, the third point, uh, as I mentioned, is the capacity building workshops that we uh, conduct. Um, I'll just give you an example of two kinds of workshops that we end up working on. One is where uh, we've helped early stage social organizations address some of the challenges that are mentioned over here. Uh, some organizations are uh, trying to understand how do you understand the right fit between a role and a candidate? What do you look at in terms of compensation? Uh, another point which uh, a lot of young organizations struggle with, especially if they're working on the ground, are how do you find employees who are able to work in complex rural settings? Uh, also deciding beyond financial incentives, what is the kind of learning and development or perks that can be given to to people in the impact sector, given that financials may be a, may be a challenge in some of the cases. The second kind of workshop that we've done is uh, working with uh, is, is, a, is a workshop conducted with impact uh, with uh, sorry with professionals from the uh, corporate sector and helping them understand what are the kind of uh, jobs that are there in the social sector. How does one really go about finding these jobs? How do you um, understanding the different kind of organizations in the social sector and so on? So helping organizations not only understand uh, sorry helping professionals not only understand what are the kind of um, jobs in the social sector, but how do you navigate and how do you find the one that is most suited to you uh, with respect to your, not only with respect to your passion, but also with respect to your skill set. And lastly, as I mentioned, uh, our knowledge sessions and events are a key part of the work that we end up doing. Um, and. Uh, I'm just waiting for the slide to change. Uh, so we conducted our uh, first human capital roundtable last December, um, where we had uh, panelists from organizations uh, that are mentioned on the top, from Central Square Foundation to Janagrahe and CPR and so on, where we addressed uh, these topics mentioned over here, which included on how do you understand hiring and grooming talent for the future, future of jobs in the impact sector, as well as building the 21st century organization, which of course was very different from how organizations were functioning uh, in the last century. Uh, we will be having our next event uh, on 19th December uh, 2019 uh, as well, which would be modeled along the same lines. We also, uh, as I mentioned, have our Dean Stefang Social Impact Careers uh, series, uh, which we uh, which we concluded in Delhi and Bangalore earlier this year, and we'll be having the next event in uh, Mumbai uh, in February uh, in collaboration with Amani Institute and IIC, where we help people understand the kind of career choices that are available in the social impact space. Uh, just to end uh, the presentation, the work that we've done over the past two years includes working closely with 100 plus social impact organizations, uh, closely addressing their human capital challenges, engaging with 60,000 plus job seekers, both from the social as well as the corporate sector, uh, having about 400 organizations that are registered and actively using our jobs platform, and uh, working with uh, large, -scale con uh, large scale social organizations on uh, consulting projects uh, specifically with with respect to talent, uh, helping execute those end to end. In case you have any questions, you can reach out uh, to us at info at uh, Thank you. Uh, thank you.
All right. Uh, thanks, Achal. Um, hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Shezia. I'm the country director for uh, Amani Institute in India. Um, and um, as Kavita mentioned in the beginning of the webinar today, I'm going to be talking about um, how Amani as an organization uh, looks at um, the concept of how we mobilize human capital for greater social impact. And I'm going to use um, the story of one of our fellows um, from the program that we run, uh, one of the things, one of the key flagship programs that we run as an example. Uh, Kavita, if you can help me go to the next slide, please. Thank you. All right. Um, so to get us started, uh, what I'd like to actually tell you about is the story of Arindam. Um, Arindam, uh, when he came to us uh, and met us last year, he was the head of marketing for Splash Fashions, which is part of Landmark Group. And he'd spent about 11 years in the private sector. Uh, so just like Archel was mentioning about the sorts of people that they work with and how they help people either in the existing social impact space or even uh, people who are trying to make the transition. He was one of those who was trying to make the transition. So he has 11 years of experience in marketing, communications and advertising. He's uh, in his background, he's actually studied in an alternative school um, in Pondicherry. And when he came to us, um, one of the main reasons he came to us was because uh, he was in apparel retail marketing and kept uh, telling us that what he does basically is sell clothes for a living and basically convince people that they needed stuff that they actually didn't need. Um, and he wanted to do something more meaningful than only selling clothes. Uh, he wanted to make the transition uh, from the private sector to the social impact space and didn't know how and uh, basically came to us because he wanted to take Amani's help in actually preparing for this career. Uh, why did he come to Amani? Um, next, uh, basically uh, about the organization. Uh, next, um, he, uh, he came to us because the organization has um, a large mission as an organization is to develop professionals who create social impact. Um, and as you can also see on the screen, um, our vision is a world beyond boundaries. Uh, we started about seven years ago, and um, one of the main things that we're trying to sort of uh, address is the fact that there are more and more people um, across the globe who are trying to build careers of meaning and impact. Uh, you will see that today, um, uh, careers, traditional careers that were careers that our parents or our grandparents um, used to sort of think of in terms of careers for themselves are no longer what the current generation or what even our generation is thinking of. Uh, and so um, who is then preparing people for the skills uh, for social impact, right? Um, that's where Amani stepped in. So we started about seven years ago, um, thanks Kavita, um, in uh, Nairobi. Uh, and then we, we started five years ago in Sao Paulo and then two years ago um, in Bangalore in India. Uh, we, we specialize in emerging markets. We, we want to focus on the global south because this is also where we know that we can have the most impact um, and where there is most scope for impact and where there is a need for it as well. Um, also, coincidentally, some of the best social innovations that have uh, come to the world have actually come from the global south. So we're very intentionally in the three locations that um, we uh, are present in, in, we are present in in the offices, but we also work across the globe. We're only we've only not managed to work in two continents so far. Uh, we're yet to go to Antarctica and to Australia, but I'm sure if you speak to us in a few years, we'll hopefully have managed to crack that as well, at least one of those. Um, so what exactly do we do? Um, uh, next, uh, why did someone like Arindam come to us, right? Uh, so there's three things that we as an organization do. I'm going to start off with the thing that's on the extreme right of the slide. So serving the purpose economy. As I mentioned, um, we really try uh, to help uh, people actually build these careers of meaning and purpose. And Archil also already alluded to this in the sense that we try and do as many open sessions, as many events 
one of the events that we do that has been happening across India is the demystifying social impact careers that Anshul has already spoken of. Um, in addition to that, we do a whole bunch of other events as well. Um, and we're also, as an organization, constantly contributing knowledge products, whether it's articles, videos, social media, etc. This is our way of sort of saying we want to do our bit to make sure that we are spreading information about how you can actually build a career in this space. Um, then comes the middle, which is the building capacity of organizations. So we do a whole bunch of work on customized capacity building programs, be it with NGOs, universities, foundations, or companies. Um, and depending on their uh, skills for capacity building that are needed, we work closely with them. And we prefer to work on longer term interventions so that we can actually work with them and see the impact of the intervention as well. Um, and something that we're actually launching that we run in all three countries right now is a leadership for growth program, which is basically focusing on leadership and management skills uh, for middle managers of small growing businesses. Um, and then the first level is our work with individual change makers. And this is where Arindam comes in, right? So anyone who's interested in building a career in social impact, be it someone who wants to make a transition from the private sector to the social impact space or someone who um, is already in the social impact space and wants to sort of build the skills to grow uh, or someone who's a social entrepreneur um, either in the beginning or in the middle of their journey uh, and trying to see how they can actually continue to build skills to be able to help their organizations grow anyone who's interested in this space comes into the program um, it's a new model for higher education um, and uh, this is where Arindam's story comes in and uh, he basically enrolled onto our program last year uh, and worked with us uh, in this space. What exactly did he go through is what I'm going to show you on the next slide. Um, so this is about now the social innovation management uh, program. Uh, the goals of the program overall are basically to equip change makers every year. Uh, with skills, with experience, and with networks. So we focus on all these things, with skills, experience, and networks, uh, to actually help them make a positive impact in the world and to build meaningful and satisfying careers. Um, we, we consider ourselves um, very important, actually, in helping uh, give a, you know, a good infusion of leadership and management talent to the social impact sector worldwide. And we really want to support the movement towards purpose-driven careers through uh, this program. Uh, the program basically runs on three pillars and um, it's equivalent to a two years master's degree. Uh, it's very intensive and it's also it's globally recognized. And the way in which we've designed the program is on the basis of two things. One is about what employers want and two is about how adults really learn. And what we've understood is that there's three ways of doing this. Um, one is experience, because what we've seen is that adults learn by doing. They need to be able to not only listen to things in the classroom, but actually go and apply. And that's why our program has structures built in a way where they not only do activities, etc., in the classroom, but also go out. Um, everyone does an apprenticeship. They all work with organizations in the social impact landscape to understand what it's like. And they all also design their own social innovation projects. So they're actually getting hands-on experience on how to use creativity and innovation to solve social or organizational problems. Um, the second pillar is expertise. And this is where we bring in experts in the space of leadership, communication, innovation, entrepreneurship, and management. And we're giving them the exposure to the networks, to global leaders across the globe to actually help them with this. And the last is insights, which we think is one of the most underrated things in the industry right now, which is how do you actually focus on leading self? How do you understand what your own motivations are? Um, so we have a whole course that is based on actually the inner journey of a change maker and focusing on leadership skills for that. These are the three pillars, basically. Um, Arindam joined the program. These are the three things that he got. Some of the course instructors, as I mentioned on the previous slide, in terms of the experts that they get to work with, these are some of the course instructors. So as you can see, we are basically always finding people who are in the ecosystem, who are at the top of the game. Um, they are practitioners, and that's one of the most important things for us. They need to be practitioners who have you know, sort of been there, done that, um, who come and teach 
uh, our fellows in the program about a whole bunch of different skills. Um, what are these skills? That's on the next slide. Um, we, we focus on a whole bunch of 21st century skills, basically, which we believe are critical uh, skills for any change maker in this day and age. Uh, so we do a course on the practice of social innovation, and this is something basically from the entire program. Four months of the program is where change makers from across the globe choose one of the three locations to come into. And so they choose either Nairobi or they choose Sao Paulo or they choose Bangalore. Uh, and from the total six month program, four months is in house. And this is where they actually get to interact with each other and go through these courses that you see on the screen right now. Um, so there's the inner journey of the change maker. We do a course on bio empathy and how you can learn from nature and how nature designs and innovates. Um, and then there are also some of the harder skills, right? Like how do you actually turn an idea into a program or venture? What are the different you know, things like business model, canvas, et cetera, that comes in? How do you manage social impact organizations? You know, how do you think about budgeting? How do you think about managing conflict? How do you think about recruiting, et cetera? Um, how do you lead purpose-driven teams? What is, dif what is the difference between a normal team and a purpose-driven team? And hence, what is the different leadership style or styles that you need to sort of understand for you to be able to do this? Um, so through the immersion phase, as you can see in the title of the slide, which is the four months that the fellows actually spend in the country with us, they go through a whole bunch of these skills. Um, and the interesting thing is that we get fellows from across the globe. So we've had people from over, we've had over 450 um, uh, fellows who finished the program so far, and they come from over 60 countries. Um, in the current cohort also, we have about nine different countries that are represented in the current class in India. That's India class four. Um, and they're from various age groups, you know, right from 21 up to 65 and everything in between. So we don't, we, the more diverse the class, the better it is because there's so much more learning in that. And that's what we really embrace. Um, and the way in which I'd like to sort of end uh, our way in which we um, mobilize human capital is to tell you about where Arindam is now. So he actually joined the program last year with us and just uh, his program basically ended um, uh, early this year. Um, and what Arindam was 100% sure of was that he wanted to make the shift. He really, really wanted uh, to move from the private sector to the social impact space but also wanted to make sure that he was not, he supports his family, um, he has a lot of um, responsibilities, and he also wanted to make sure that he was, he was still making a living while making a difference. Um, this, is, this is a story that's close to my heart also personally, because on the 1st of October, so very recently, Arindam joined Rise Legs. Um, Rise Legs is an organization that's focused on making well-designed, cost-effective mobility aids for physically challenged in individuals, including athletes. And Arindam actually landed up meeting Rise Legs when we do something called a social innovation safari as part of the program, where we expose our fellows to a whole bunch of different sorts of organizations in the social impact landscape in Bangalore. Uh, this was the first um, organization that we visit, visited last year when he was doing the program. He stayed in touch with them. Uh, in the last phase of the program, he actually did a, a sort of consulting, a pro bono consulting assignment for them. And today on the, first of, um, on the 1st of October, he actually joined them as their senior manager for business development. And we took this photo um, on the 11th of October, last week basically, when we did the social innovation safari with the current class. Um, so it was a sort of full circle moment for us where we got to go back um, and see him in action. Uh, he was sitting on the other side just a year ago, and now, you know, he presented to us the story of Rise Legs and where they are now. Uh, I love something that he said to us um, in his feedback form when he left the organization, which is when he joined Amani, he was very much found. And then how during the process, he was meaningfully lost and then found was found again at the end of this course. Um, and I think that was something that sort of stuck with us a lot and helped us realize that we are doing good work in this space. Uh, what I'd like to end with is the last slide, which is also about uh, what happens to people like Arindam, right? So they've, he joins basically a network of fellow change makers. So we have a global network and a global, global community of change makers, of their peers, of instructors, of network partners. 
And we want to make sure that we are doing our bit and actually, uh, because for mobilizing human, uh, you know, human capital, it's, it's, it's one thing to do something with one person, but how can we actually bring them together to actually create more good? Um, and so there's a whole bunch of alumni alumni led initiatives that we do uh we have you know they share resources they sometimes partner up and work with each other and it's basically uh you know a family uh, that you find in different parts of the globe who speak the same language um who are as um you know um motivated and as focused on creating positive impact in the world who then become your um, your peers and who are there then to support you through this process. Um, that's all I had. My last slide is only our contact information, and we are very very happy to welcome you to be part of the change. Um, I'm happy now to take any questions. We will now be taking in questions from the audience. Uh, we, we already have some questions. Uh, the first question is for Shazia. Um, how is the human capital scene within the impact space different in Brazil, Kenya, and India? And how do you strategize your intervention, keeping in view the similarity as well as difference across the countries? Uh, great question. Um, we actually haven't seen that much of a difference, except that in, uh, well, a really big difference that we noticed in Nairobi um, is that the social impact landscape actually attracts a lot more people because it actually pays fantastically. Um, it pays uh, as well as the private sector, sometimes even better. And so uh, the influx of talent um, into the social impact landscape in Nairobi is um, slightly more. It, it seems like a more sort of preferred choice, uh, as you would imagine, because that's one of the main sort of like issues that people have in India, right? Um, so we have seen that in Nairobi, um, uh, you know, the way in which the sector is moving, they are paying uh, at par, paying well. Uh, people do feel like they can make a living and make a difference at the same time. Um, and that's how, um, you know, careers of social impact are therefore a lot more attractive uh, over there. Um, Brazil is getting there. The social impact landscape is thriving, and there's a lot of work that's happening in uh, the space over there. Brazil and India, um, and also in Kenya, what we're noticing is that right now, um, uh, with the way in which the countries are progressing, and um, you know, the sort of focus of the the government in the countries is progressing, there's a lot of actually focus on getting more and more local and focusing more on more and more on like sort of nationalistic stuff um, it's therefore becoming tough for us to actually bring in as part of our program more international elements um, but that's where we feel like we are you know um, we are in the right space because we want to fight the good fight and make sure that we are um, you know helping people learn through different you know through diversity of different countries of different age groups of different backgrounds um, uh, the curriculum as such is actually a very global curriculum. So what we do is we, it's the, it's the same because we want to have a standard experience for everyone who goes through the program, because there will be Indians who go to Nairobi and Kenya, uh, Nairobi or who go to Sao Paulo as well. So the, the course content is very global in nature. What we do is we actually customize it in each country uh, in two ways. Uh, one is the the apprenticeships, so the the working experience that every fellow gets is in the country, right? So then they actually get an understanding of the landscape, and that's where it's different because in Bangalore, for example, um, the social enterprise landscape is fantastic. It's booming right now, and there's a whole bunch of different social enterprises um, that are working here, and so it's a very very relevant experience for them. Perhaps more NGOs um, in uh, in Nairobi, uh, but again, the landscape is uh, is very attractive over there in terms of uh, long term job opportunities. Um, and in each country, so we'll give the the local sort of apprenticeships then become a way in which it's fully customized because they understand what it's like to work in each country. Um, and then the second way in which we sort of customize it is by bringing in examples. So while we have a lot of global examples, we also like bringing in local examples of what's happening in, you know, the India landscape. What is the 
current sort of um, themes and trends that we're seeing happening in India. And we always bring a whole bunch of different guest speakers um, into the program who can actually talk about their journeys and what it's like to actually either work with government, work with bureaucracy, work with, you know, uh, working in silos versus, you know, partnering with other organizations in the landscape. So we bring in local experts to come and talk to them to give a local flavor to the program as well. Uh, the next question is for you, Achal. Uh, with individuals at different life stages, uh, like millenn millennials, mid-career professionals, and retired people wanting to join the impact space, how does your platform cater to their differential demands? Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, uh, if this is directed specifically at the platform, uh, so the platform uh, does have uh, options to choose, uh, you know, whether you're looking at volunteering or you're looking at full-time work or you're looking at um, even uh, people who may be looking at work from home options and so on. So when you're searching for a job, you could do the, use the filter accordingly. You can also look at a sustainable development goals filter, just in case you're looking at a specific um, a specific a specific goal that you would specifically want to work on. Uh, and and of course there uh, there is also um, the number of years of experience that someone is looking at, an organization is looking at. So depending on uh, you know whether you are a millennial or a mid career professional or someone retired. Uh, perhaps you could look at what um, number of years of experience that organization is seeking and whether you would be a fit there uh, or not. Uh, there's a question for you, Shezia. Uh, what has been the overall retention rate of Amani Fellows within the impact space post the fellowship? Uh, great question. Um, what we've noticed is that so, so far we've had about 450 fellows who've done the program. Um, about 95% of them are still um, in the social impact landscape, uh, building careers in this space. Um, about 15 to 20% of them are social entrepreneurs, um, starting their own organizations. Um, though this isn't a, a direct outcome, I mean, our program is not actually focused on entrepreneurship. We actually focus a lot on intrapreneurship as well. We want to be able to give people skills to be able to build um, careers in the space, irrespective of actually starting organizations. But so far, we've had about 95% work in the sector. And when I say in the sector, I mean, they can also, uh, it, it will either be in the sector or even working in the private sector, but on on in roles which are related to social impact as well um, because for us that is also important we're not saying that the private sector are enemies we're saying because there's so much scope for actually impact over there the resources um, the number of people involved etc are so much more over there as well so what we try and do is also encourage our fellows to see if they are even working in existing private sector organizations how can they then affect change and bring in social impact and responsible social business elements um, from within the private sector as well and encourage that as well. So about 90 to 95% um, have actually continued to stay on and work in areas of social impact. Actually, the next question is for you. Uh, work culture is a major deciding factor for people to join any organization. How have you helped social sector organizations build a vibrant and inclusive work, work culture? Um, thanks for the question. Uh, so to be fairly honest, um, what we end up doing is uh, we've not conducted workshops or uh, done any consulting assignments specifically on work culture. So, uh, but what we have and what we have done are training programs uh, around soft skills, uh, and um, those training programs are obviously um, curated in such a manner that we first understand the pain points that the audience has, and then uh, you know build up our curriculum accordingly. Uh, having said that, apart from something as direct as that, um, when we do end up uh, working with organizations, uh, we do try and also understand um, 
and the experiences that job seekers have when they are interviewing with them and that also gives us a good snapshot of what the what kind of work culture these uh, you know uh, prospective employees are expecting and uh, that's something that we you know give as informal feedback to the organizations we work with uh, which has uh, which uh, has helped in the past uh, with organizations as they are able to understand what are some of the things that they may be doing wrong uh, without really realizing it so i think it's twofold uh, directly through um, through soft skills training uh, directed at uh, in, in a targeted manner understanding specific pain points uh, and secondly through informal feedback to uh, the employers uh, that we get from uh, prospective job seekers uh the next question i think uh, both shezia and achil you can share your views on uh, because this seems like a general question uh, many students might not be very keen on working for social impact are there any steps taken by the organizations for better communication for career pros prospects as well maybe i can begin achil and then you can go after me yeah. um so one thing that we do um is for anyone who comes into the program irrespective of uh age or background uh what we're trying to do is actually increase awareness of careers in this space because what we realized is um that if i even talk from an indian perspective um people see or hear social sector and they think ngo um they don't know about the different sorts of organizations that exist in this space and the different sorts of careers that actually exist in this space and that's why one of the main things that we're trying to do is actually spread awareness about um how you can actually build a career and what are the different sorts of skills that are required for this um so we have a uh, we have an entire course that is actually focused on careers in the social impact landscape where we actually do a deep dive uh into every single type of organization be it like international ngos development ngos humanitarian organizations impact investing firms philanthropic organizations csr you know so the entire gamut the entire landscape of social impact is something that we focus on building um awareness on as a first step in the course and then we also talk about what what are the different sorts of careers that you can explore there and also what are the pros and cons of working with each of these different types of organizations right because awareness is the key um it's the lack of awareness right now because there are some careers which are very widely sort of like you know uh, publicized and celebrated um in the indian um uh context you know engineering medicine so all of those all of that information is always going to be available but when people think social sector they only think ngo um and we want to try and change that so we do an entire course on this as part of our immersion phase and then we're constantly doing um uh, events like the event that we do with arsan um on the mystifying social impact careers that's basically our way in which we're trying to spread awareness on um the the variety of opportunities available here Great. Um, so I think Shazia has summed up pretty much uh, every. I mean, I don't wouldn't repeat any of that. So uh, that I I would probably just add on to that with respect to what organizations can do once someone actually joins in, and how do you sort of retain that person uh, with respect to career prospects in the social impact sector. So um, uh, and specifically for people who uh, maybe transitioning from maybe the corporate sector, because um, for a lot of people it's that passion to work in the sector that motivates them to join and. and um when they don't see results uh, with respect to the work they are doing and whether it's creating any impact or not um uh, it's it's fairly easy for people to lose lose track or the on so i think it's really important for organizations to keep their employees motivated uh, with respect to the work that they are doing so i think um and then also helping them understand what their career pro prospects are with respect to uh, that job uh, maybe in that organization or with that field specifically in the social sector so uh, i think it has to be a combination of getting people to the social organization as per their skills and passion and then also keeping them motivated so that um, that retention aspect is not affected uh, the the next question is for you again acha Uh, are any steps taken by Arthin to understand the uh, supply side? Uh, I guess this means job seekers. Uh, if yes, then what model is followed? 
so uh, so typically we work on a b2b model uh, where you know organizations are typically our clients and then we reach out to relevant talent but uh, given that um, we are uh, constantly trying to also support job seekers um, a lot of our uh, a lot of our knowledge uh, of course happens through the people who apply for the roles we are working on that gives us a very good sense of uh, you know what are the kind of requirements uh, that that job seekers have in mind um, and at the same time uh, as i mentioned we have our job portal in place um, so that also just from a data perspective we do get a good sense of uh, you know what is the kind of experience of uh, somebody who's applying for a role uh, a specific mid management role or what are the kind of uh, exper experience or profiles that we're getting for a variety of roles uh, so um, so i think how i would summarize it is that um, though we don't uh, directly specifically you know go out and work individually with job seekers given that uh, the roles we work for we get you know relevant candidates for that we try and understand the landscape according to that uh, and um, uh, we've gotten a mix uh, i would say we get a good mix of both corporate and um, uh, social sector uh, professionals who are looking uh, for opportunities so it's it's a good mix of uh, both of them and and across all age groups so right from somebody just finishing college to to people who may have spent about say 30 years in the corporate sector as well so it's it's fa fairly diverse it's just that we are also trying to understand how do we uh, channelize that uh, really well into organizations in the social sector well thank you shazia and anchal for answering all the questions and thank you everyone for participating in this interesting session Uh, we will be posting the webinar recording on our website by next week so please look out for it the avpn india summit 2019 is being held on the 28th november in bangalore and we'll be covering many interesting uh, topics regarding social funding and investment in india please register at the earliest before the summit is sold out Uh, the registration link is given be below and i hope all of you had a wonderful time on the webinar uh, thank you all of you and have a good day everyone thanks thanks everyone bye bye